our defending champion, Scott Bloomquist. Welcome back to Eldora, Scott. Thank you. It's glad, I'm glad to be back. I look forward to coming back ever since last year. Never seen anything like this before and really glad to be a part of it. Were you in awe when you first laid eyes in this place in 1988? Absolutely. Never had seen anything like it. I was absolutely in awe. We actually almost left and went to another race because I, I pulled in. There were 250 cars, I think, here. And I got to thinking about, you know, what makes me think I can win this race. Never been here before, paid 5000 for second. And there was a race down at home paying 5000 to win. I knew I could win. So I almost loaded up and went back to run that 5000. And uh, somebody talked me out of it. And I'm glad I stayed down. Uh, Victory Lane celebration here is pretty unique. And just to be part of it, you know, and, and to, just to come here for the first time and to win it. And you know, the funny part about it, it was one of the easier wins. You know, these wins don't come easy at this place. So, and it, and it just, everything went so smooth. And when it was over, you're just sitting there in disbelief. You know, because again, I'd never been here and, and it was just so unbelievable. You know, but we, we, we went a long time without winning the World 100, you know, and then just, and we got back to victory lane again. And you know, the, probably the one that stands out maybe the most as far as the how dominant we were and is the one that the window net issue when they took it out and put me to the tail of 30 car field and we'd already taken the lead and it's like man you know that that was kind of a real kick in the you know what and it's like just kept a good attitude and uh, knew we'd passed them all once we just needed to do it again so you know that that one was truly one that i would say i had the most fun just without fans here it really it doesn't feel like the same, doesn't feel like a race. It feels pretty bizarre, you know. And on one hand, we've had so much trouble that I'm kind of glad they aren't here watching it, you know. But, you know, hopefully we'll get through it. You just look forward to it getting back to normal, especially at Eldora, because usually there's such a large crowd here and they are so vocal. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little history and you can just say a little bit of each moment that's happened here. Good or bad, 1988 World 100. Dream come true. 1997, third lay mile dream, Bloomquist Fry incident. I'll say this to people every now and then, uh, people will bring up things like that. And I'll look at someone and I say, you ever screw up? I, I don't think I do it often, but you know, that's not how I race people and that's not th something that I intentionally meant to do. I was ready to take the car in so much harder and thought, because I hadn't followed him, but no laps. He'd just taken the lead uh, in traffic, and I'd been driving in so much harder, I didn't think he was gonna lift that soon, and when he did, I couldn't stop quick enough. So, you know, it was just a bad incident, you know, but yeah, that, that polarized a lot of people too. But I remember seeing them all coming. I was waiting, waiting for him to start throwing things, but I don't think we had much of that. There's 100,000 to win races, you know, you travel around for 10,000 to win. Uh, you know, let's say you win half of them. If you, you go to 20 races, you win half of them take, to win $100,000. And you look at the miles, and wear and tear on your engines, your help, you know, all the expense you pay out through that time period to run that many events. When you can win this one event that one weekend, and you know, actually, you can make a profit and uh, look at spending some money outside of racing. Tony's been great for this place, and, and Roger has also. You know, they're 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 both good promoters. They're, they're obviously good businessmen, and. Uh, spend a little time around each other and joke around. You know, some of the things they think that have happened with me, they think I do on purpose, and they kind of rib me about that sometimes. But, well, the ones that, that come keep coming back, that's for sure, and, and they're still, I still run into people that have never been, and I just tell them they have to go. You, have to, you just have to experience it. There's still, there's, there's a mystique about this place that you never know what's gonna happen here. Again, you look around, there, there's nothing like it. You know, there's no, there's not a track. There's the way the stands are set up. Fans come here and they, they buy souvenirs and they, they're, they're really, they're into it and they get emotional about it. So, you know, yeah, there's, there's not any louder crowd in the country. I gotta ask you, how did you come up with the crotch chop? <laughs> I just fan, uh, that was just from, the, from fan rejection, I thought I'd give him a little back. <laughs>